In this video, I'll break down how to create and install your own LUTs into Final Cut Pro using Pixelmator Pro. Now, if you're not aware of what LUTs are, LUTs are essentially just color presets. So instead of color grading completely from scratch, you can go ahead and just simply apply a LUT, which is essentially a color preset. Now, in this video, I'll break down how to create your own LUTs completely from scratch. But if you want to go ahead and just download the LUT for free, it's also on my digital store. But in this video, I'll just give you a step-by-step -step process of how I created that LUT. Now, the first thing you want to do is you want to find some sort of reference frame. So go ahead and let's just scroll the timeline through and let's say we want to use this as like a reference frame so all you want to do is head over here to the share option right here and then all you want to do is you want to click on save current frame and we can go ahead and obviously it's just the name of the video we can go ahead and just call this number one and let's say the settings right here we want it on a png image that should be good and then go ahead and click on next and you want to go ahead and just save this to your desktop just you just going to use this as like a reference frame so i'm going to go ahead and do is i'm going to go ahead and just open the pixelmator pro app by go ahead and just simply opening it now this is a one-time fee so it's not a subscription fee it's a great tool especially if you're using you know final cut apple motion it really like kind of like connects everything together i think you can actually export projects from pixelmator pro right into apple motion so let's go ahead and, and go in here and let's click on create a new document so we're going to create a new document and you can go through and, and find the different resolutions in this case 1920 by 1080 that's pretty good and of course you can go through all the settings but this is just this is just kind of like a base so we'll go ahead here and click on create so go ahead and just click on create and that is going to open up a new document let's go ahead and just drag this window over and let's go ahead and drag the png image into our project um, right here and now we can go ahead and just kind of scale it up let's go ahead and just kind of put this back into the frame then we can go ahead and go command minus just to zoom out a little bit actually maybe that's a little too far out so let's go ahead and just scale this image up until we get it to the size we want it's not like super important that's completely scaled up but we'll just scale up again this is just like a this is just a reference frame just so we can see what's actually going on so there we go now we have the image the reference frame now what you want to do is you want to head over here i believe this is this tab right here click on this tab and you want to click on color adjustments so as you can see right here, we're going to create a new color adjustments layer right here. So here is the color adjustments layer. Now we're going to go ahead and just mess with a couple of different settings. So we're going to scroll down to we find white balance. We're going to go ahead and kind of make this a little bit warm. So let's kind of increase the warm. Let something like maybe like plus 20 should be good. Now we're going to move the tint more into the green area right here. So let's just move this more into the greenish area. Now we're going to head over here to basic and we're going to mess with a couple different different settings. Let's go over here to exposure and we're going to increase the exposure slightly, maybe like 60 something. We're going to go to the highlights and we're going to turn the highlights down a little bit. It'd be like negative 50 should be pretty good. So let's do like negative 50. The shadows, let's bring the shadows up just a little bit. So the shadows up maybe like 20, 30 and let's go to the brightness and let's turn up the brightness a little bit something like this should be good we want to turn the shadows down a little bit so we'll turn the brightness up to maybe like 27 that looks kind of um, that looks kind of cool so again you, you kind of good you can go through this and mess with this a little more but usually you want to turn up the exposure around 60 the highlights about negative 50 the shadows plus 20 30 and then we're turn the brightness to around plus 20 maybe we'll bring the brightness down a little bit to make something like around 20 uh, should be pretty good now let's go ahead and scroll down a little bit. We're going to go to the actual curves. So as you can see, we'll go ahead and just kind of basically, uh, we're going to go ahead and go to the uh, curves tab. So I'm going to go ahead and head over here to curves and go ahead and just turn on the curves tab and make sure it's on RGB. Now what we're going to do is we're going to, we're going to place a mark on the highlights and mark on the shadows. And let's go ahead and just drag the highlights down a little bit and just drag the shadows down too. Now what we're going to do is we're going to take the black point and we're going to bring up the black point a little bit and then we're going to go ahead to the white point we're going to bring the white point down slightly something like this and we adjust the highlights bring the highlights down a little more so we're just bringing down the shadows bringing down the highlights and then again bringing down the white point so maybe a little something like this and bring up the black point and that should look pretty good so there's kind of what we're just going to adjust on the curves uh, setting so let's go ahead and go here to the fade let's turn on the fade tab and we'll do the black to something like we'll go ahead and type in like 100 
and 50. So we'll turn the blacks to 150. And then we'll take the whites and turn the whites up to something around like 20. Should be pretty good. So there we go. Just simple as that. We're going to adjust the blacks and whites of the fade. Now we're going to head over and we're going to go and find the tab where it says selective color. So kind of just scroll down until you find as you see selective color and turn on selective color. Now we're going to go ahead and adjust a couple of different things. So we're going to head over here to the red and we're going to go ahead and let's turn up the sat the um the uh, hue so we're going to turn up the hue a little bit and let's turn down the saturation and turn down the brightness so you can kind of just mess through this you can go as an as intense as you want something like that should look pretty good now we're going to head over here to the orange tab and we're going to go ahead and take the um hue right here and we're just going to turn the hue down a little bit so go ahead and just kind of turn down the hue, something like into the orange tab. So you can see the same thing right here. So you're kind of making it orange. And then also the orange tab, we're trying to make the hue, as you can see, more into the orange section. Now let's head over here to the yellow tab. And we're going to go ahead and head to the hue and again, move this kind of the opposite direction because we want more of that like warmish um, color, which lo should look pretty good. Now we're head over here to the green tab and let's go ahead and basically bring all these up. So we're going to bring the hue up. We're going to bring the saturation up. And we're gonna bring like the brightness up, something like this. Again, you can make it as intense as you want. We want it more in the bluish um, green area. And already that looks a lot better, maybe a little more. As you can see, already that looks really cool. Now let's head over here to the cyan tab. And we're gonna go ahead and turn, bring up the hue. We're gonna bring up the saturation. We're gonna go ahead and let's bring down the brightness a little bit. Now let's head over here to the um, blue tab. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna bring down the hue in the blue, and then we're gonna go over here to saturation. We're going to increase the saturation, something like this. Then we'll go to brightness and just kind of bring down the brightness. And as you can see, that's looking a lot better. And for purple and pink, we'll just completely leave it how it is. Now we're going to head over here to the three-way um, color wheel. What we're going to do the highlights is we're going to take the highlights and we're going to make it more into that like magenta color. So something like this, we're going to make it a little more magenta. We're going to go to the mid-tones and we're going to turn the mid-tones more into the orange tab. Because you can see, you can already kind of see the look of that. That looks really cool. If we bring the magenta down some Something like this again this is all very much of like a personal um very much a personal preference so let me bring it mess with this a little more now we're going to head over here to the shadows and we're going to bring the shadows more into like the cyan so as you can see something like that we're going to bring it a lot more into the cyan tab which should look pretty cool and as you can see that looks a lot better now we can also head over here to add some like grain so if we scroll down here and enable the grain tab we can maybe mess with some of like the grain. So go to size, maybe turn the size down to something like 12 and the intensity will bring the intensity down to something around like 15. So as you can see, now it's gonna add a little bit of grain. It's not super subtle. So if we can increase the scale a little bit, you can see it adds a little bit of grain. So maybe we'll take the size and you can see it's not super subtle, but it's a very small, intense, very small grain. So we'll do something like this. That should look pretty good. You obviously don't have to add grain if you don't want to. If you're not creating a film, a film LUT, you're probably not going to want to add uh, grain. Now what we're going to do is we're going to scroll all the way up. I'm going to go ahead and basically we're going to go ahead and just export um, the LUT as you can see. So we'll head over here to this tab right here, this, these little dots right here, click on this little dot right here. As you see, match color, denoise, deband, there's a whole, use texture wear, color adjustments. But as you see, export adjustments as LUTs. So we'll go ahead and click on this, export adjustments as LUTs. And we'll go ahead, as you see, texture wear cannot be um, recreated using LUTs. So the export LUT will look different. And we're going to go ahead and just simply click on export anyway. So we will go ahead and click on, so we'll go ahead and click on um, export anyways. And then we can go ahead and just name this. So we'll do like a uh, film. We can go ahead and let's type in like vintage. So vintage uh, film uh, look. You can of course name it whatever you want. And then we can go ahead and just click on where we want to save it. So documents. So we're going to go ahead and kind of figure out where we want. So let's go here to uh, favorites. Let's go over here. And as you see, there's a whole bunch of places you can save it. Let's go to desktop. So click on desktop and we'll go ahead and just click on export. 
So let's go ahead and literally just click on the export tab and then it's going to export that to your desktop and it should be like a dot cube file. So as you can see, we'll go ahead and let's just see if it exported correctly. So as you can see, vintage film look dot cube file. So that should be all good. And then we can go ahead and just close out of Pixelmator Pro and open up Final Cut. Now that we're back into Final Cut, we're gonna head over here to the effects panel, go to all, and then all you wanna do is just type in LUT. So type in LUT and it should come up as custom LUT. Simply apply the custom LUT effect onto your clip or onto your photo. We'll go ahead and just exit out of here. Now what you wanna do is now you wanna install this into Final Cut. So if you head over here to LUT, go to none, and then click recent, choose, you see, real finder. We can go ahead and click on choose custom LUT. So click on choose custom LUT. And then as you can see, desktop, vintage film look right here. So as you can see, vintage, uh, vintage film look dot cube. It's a 3D uh, LUT. And you wanna probably have it as rec 709, rec, uh, um, input rec 709, output rec 709. But all LUTs are gonna be a dot cube file. If it's not a dot cube file, it's not a LUT. So as you can see, des uh, desktop dot cube file, vintage film look dot cube, 3D LUT, and everything should look good. And remember Rec 709. And all you want to do is click on open. So click on open, and it should import that. As you see, literally there we go. Now you have a really cool. So as you see right here. And go ahead and zoom in a little bit. As you can see, so here we go. Let's go ahead and click on this. So before and then after. Now you have a really cool washed out vintage look effect. So if we go ahead and play the clip right here. Here is before, so that really cool vintage film look. So again, we'll do it again. Here is, so we'll let Final Cut or render this. Here is before, and let's enable the custom LUT, and now here is after. There you go, just as simple as that. You have created like a really cool uh, vintage film look effect. And of course you can just take the same steps that I did and change um, the different settings, but I just wanna show you one example. So that's basically how you create LUTs and then import them into Final Cut. Anyways, hopefully you enjoyed this video. Hopefully you found it helpful and informative. If you wanna watch more videos like this, make sure to go ahead and hit that subscribe button. If you wanna download this LUT for free, it's available on my store. The link is down in the description below. And if you're also looking for some really cool Final Cut Pro plugins, presets, transitions overlays those are also for sale on my digital store the link is down in the description below anyways i will see you in the next one peace